Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, we are going to take a closer look at the Raspberry Bandit. I would like to thank everybody who commented on my community post and let me know what textures that they wanted to see. So we will be covering an assortment of different textures that the artwork features. Well, let's get started. 3D Face Let's first analyze the reference photo. Notice how the central part of the face has the palest values on it. This draws the eyes to the area. The adjacent areas are darker, and again, this helps those pale areas stand out. Now the dark area under the jaw, in combination with the white cheeks, really helps push the face upward or make it seem closer to the viewer. Now notice how the bridge of the nose is lighter in value than the adjacent dark fur. This is giving the bridge of the nose a 3D shape. Look at the white cheeks and notice how they are darker along the sides and bottom. Again, this is another factor that contributes to the face looking 3D. We need to replicate those features in our artwork. I am using zigzags to fill the bridge of the nose with fur texture. Notice how flat the area looks. The reason is that the area is fairly uniform in color. Darkening up the area under the jaw helps keep the focus on the pale cheeks, but the face still looks flat. Making the throat or the area under the jaw even darker doesn't fix the flat look that the face has. One of the things we need to do is darken up the fur around the bridge of the nose. With short fur texture, I always use the same zigzag stroke for every layer of fur burned in. Notice how the bridge of the nose looks like it has stripes of color on it. This doesn't look 3D. To fix this, we need gradient shading to transition between the bridge of the nose and the adjacent dark fur. Now it looks better, but it still needs work. The reference photo shows that the bridge of the nose gets very dark just before you reach the level of the eyes. I need to fix my artwork so more reburning is in order. The bridge of the nose now has shape, but the white fur on the cheeks or the jaw area does not. I start by burning along the bottom edge of the jaw, that is where the fur is the darkest. I also reburn the fur under the jaw or on the throat to make sure that it remains darker in color than the jaw is. Notice how adding color to the white fur on the jaw and darkening up the fur on the throat are really making the face look 3D. The Whiskers I started by drawing over the whiskers with a white charcoal pencil. Then I carefully burn the area around the charcoal. And I'm not going to lie, this wasn't easy. You have to be careful to accurately burn in the fur behind the whiskers, and the whole time you have to avoid burning over the whiskers. This rule applies even when the white charcoal is in place. The reason is that the charcoal will resist the heat of the pin tip but it won't block it completely. When I switched to a larger shader to work on the fur, it became too difficult to avoid burning over the whiskers, so I ignored the whiskers and concentrated on the fur. Once I was done burning in the fur, then I used the sharp point of a knife and scraped the whiskers back into existence. After the basic shape of the whisker was created, I would use scrapers of other sizes to widen out the whisker. Depending on the whisker's arch, it can be easier to scrape in a different direction. Also, 
It can be helpful to draw in the whiskers with a white colored pencil and then do the scraping after the whiskers have been drawn in. I haven't had much luck using a white charcoal pencil for drawing the whiskers because the white charcoal doesn't adhere well to burned wood. The Wispy Leg Hairs To create the wispy leg hairs, begin by burning in the dark area in the center. As you burn, create the ends of the hair by burning around them. It might be easier to draw the hairs in with a white charcoal pencil, just like we did with the whiskers. Keep in mind that these hairs should not be bright white in color for two reasons. First, they are not the focal point, and second, they are in shadows. When I create a hair, I often burn the hair to a tan color, and then I burn very darkly around that hair I want to create. Now that the edges are somewhat defined, it's time to start the long process of creating individual hairs within the area. For me, this involves burning lines of assorted widths. Then, I start picking individual hairs to emphasize. By this, I mean I pick a hair to be pale in color by darkening up the adjacent hairs. I will work an area, leave, then come back and rework the area. Each time, I create more individual hairs, or fine-tune existing hairs. Sometimes I darken up the overall color if needed, and then start re-emphasizing hairs. I also change where individual hairs may start or stop. Basically, I try to create a lot of variety. As I said before, this is not a fast process. At least it isn't for me. Part of the reason for that was due to the fact that this was a first for me. I had not tried to create long, wispy hairs before. Since I wasn't 100% sure of how to handle the area, I took my time, worked extra slow, and discovered what things worked and didn't work for me. Basically, I experimented with burn strokes and even pen tips. Did I end up with an exact replica of the photo? No. But I was pleased with the texture that I created. Side and Tail Fur With the longer fur, I am using zigzag burn strokes. This is the same burn stroke I normally would use for fur. I am using my largest shader because it is easier to burn longer zigzag strokes. Could I use a smaller shader? Yes, I would just have to increase my hand movement. Another thing I am doing is burning the zigzags sideways or horizontally instead of vertically. This makes it harder to burn uniformly so I end up with a lot more tonal variety. In this particular case, that is a desirable thing because the raccoon's fur has a lot of color variety in it. As I work, I am burning small bursts or groups of zigzags and leaving little gaps between the groups. The little gaps become pale hairs. I want to point out the rows of faint lines on the tail. These rows mark the general location of the dark rings. I did not trace in each ring on the reference photo. Instead, I marked their general location and I will create a tail that has rings, but I will not be creating an exact replica of the reference photo. As I create the tail, Notice how I am burning rows of zigzags on the tail. Each row has extremely jagged edges. Those jagged edges 
become the hairs that are overlapping on adjacent rings. This technique really adds a lot more realism to the fur texture. Be aware that the white rings will be covered in the white fur chapter, which is after this one. When burning zigzags, make sure to use a very light hand pressure. The razor edge of the shader can easily sink down into the surface of the wood. If that happens, it makes it a lot more difficult to burn zigzags. In fact, I highly recommend to always use a light hand pressure when burning. Let the pin tip glide across the surface of the wood. You will get better burn results. Some artists prefer to use wire pin tips, like the one shown in the lower right corner of the screen. They claim that the wire tips are easier than the razor edge of the shader to create zigzag fur. I recommend testing them both out and see what works best for you. After the tail has a base layer of color and texture, then it is time for fine tuning. I reburn over the area using the same zigzag burn stroke but I also burn single lines here and there. The goal with the fine tuning is to darken up areas, but during the process, it is important to maintain the jagged edges and tonal variety of the fur. One of the last things that I did was burn in some single dark lines along the lower edge of the tail that stick out onto the background. Here's how the raccoon's tail looked before and after I was done with the fine tuning process. Does the tail in my artwork look exactly like the reference photo? No, but my artwork conveys a raccoon tail and I'm pleased with how it turned out. White fur. Always blot the pen tip on scrap wood or on a dark area in the artwork to remove excessive heat from the pen tip. This will ensure that the initial burn mark isn't extra dark. A common mistake I see when handling white fur is not adding enough color to it. Unburned wood does not look like white fur. It just looks like unburned wood. To fix this problem, burn in quite a few tan lines. Burn the lines in the direction that the fur grows. Do this even if the reference photo doesn't show it. It will transform the unburned wood into white fur that has texture. Here's how the eyebrows looked before and after I burned in the tan lines. I burned a lot of lines on the white rings on the tail. I am using the razor edge of the shader to do this, but a wire tip or even a writer pin tip could be used. Make sure to vary the line color and the direction of the lines. Fur is made of individual hairs, and they don't stay in straight layers. There are always those one or two or several hairs that angle off in different directions. Now again, add a number of lines to the white fur, but keep them in the tan range. The adjacent dark rings will provide the needed contrast to keep the tan lines looking pale in color. In fact, the darker the area is around the white fur, the darker you can burn those tan lines and still have the white fur look white. The leaves. With the leaves, begin by burning over the vein lines using the flat of the shader. This will produce a wide burn stroke and it will form the shadow and the vein for the leaf. Then, Burn long strokes that follow the general curve of the leaf and fill in one section at a time. A section 
is what I consider the area between two vein lines. Make sure to examine the reference photo to determine any special characteristics of the leaf. For example, this particular leaf has a gentle downward bow or curve in it. This means that the color should get gradually darker as we approach the end of the leaf. Since I started burning on the end of the leaf, I will need to let the color get gradually lighter as I approach the stem side of the leaf. Once the leaf has been burned to the desired color, then use the razor edge of the shader and reburn over the vein lines. Also, you can add little side veins. Be aware that it might be easier to use a writer pen tip for this step. The berries. Use a writer pen tip and draw rows of small circles to represent the drupets on the raspberry. Then reburn around the circles to thicken up the lines. Next, switch to a shader pen tip and burn over the berries. Leave the centers lighter in color than the edges. I am burning really small circular motion as I work on the berries. Next, lightly burn over the stem and leaves. Make the base of the leaves a touch darker than the outer tips. After that, resume burning over the berries until they are as dark as you desire. During the reburning process, I am still using circular motion. Lastly, use a writer pen tip and reburn around the drupets. Does my raspberry look like the reference photo? Nope, it's not even close. But like the raccoon's tail, my artwork conveys the look of a berry, and that is plenty good enough for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have a blog written about the Raspberry Bandit, and that blog contains the reference photo for this artwork. I don't consider the blog to be a tutorial, but there are a lot of pictures, and that might help you if you want to replicate the artwork. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week.